In the late 1940s, the Chesapeake and Ohio built three M1 class steam turbine electric locomotives to pull a flagship passenger service that never materialized. At the time of construction, these were the longest single unit locomotives in the world. I'm curious what holds the current record, but they proved even less reliable than the UP8080 and operated for a mere two years. All three units were scrapped in 1950. This build was commissioned by a user on Rebrickable, but I had considered building the M1 as well as the Norfolk and Western Turbine, the John Henry, before I built the 8080. With the UP machine, I had made some trade-offs that ended up leaving it a little bit underpowered, and I knew I could make a better performing model of that size, especially since the CNO design only had a single power unit along with the tender. First, I just want to show the sheer size of the thing. With a length of 84 studs, the M1 locomotive beats the 8080 turbine by 7 studs and the Q2 locomotive by 28 studs. Furthermore, with a weight of 1600 grams, it beats the 1200 gram 8080B by 30% and the 900 gram Q2 by almost 100%. The M1 power unit actually uses fewer parts than the 8080 turbine unit, though. The construction, again, for the locomotive is actually more simple than that of the 8080B with a lot more studs up and or continuous snot sections. I generally try to use brick for large geometric patterns, and the stripes on the M1 have perfect spacing. One brick between the first and second, and two studs between the second and third. Due to the relative rarity of dark blue, I made the stripes out of more of the same part rather than fewer of different parts. The cab has a bit of a fancier snot, and I used semicircular tiles for the rounded windows. I think this works better than the frame I used on the Q2, and I will probably use it again for my eventual T1 rebuild. Also, I had considered making the roof dark gray, but the available part selection ultimately did not favor it. Finally, I used a previously untried method of supporting the frames on the driven bogies, uh, but more on the drivetrain later. Of course, the unpowered tender ended up having the more complicated construction, almost exclusively due to the lips around the ends, a shallow one at the back and a much deeper one at the front. These sorts of lips are notoriously difficult to pull off in LEGO, which has a nominal resolution of one stud. Ultimately, the walls had to remain a stud thick, but the roof could get a little thinner thanks to tiles, etc. Inside the powered unit, a not PF receiver drives two not PF L motors, which power small BBB wheels with a five to three gear increase. 
these third-party motors generate a bit more power than the official motors. And the massive M1 needs all the power it can get. As far as I can tell, the NPF receivers deliver at least as much power as official V2 receivers. And I have not seen any sign of hitting a current limit with this setup. At full speed on straight track, the model can reach 46 centimeters per second, more than double the 22 centimeters per second of the UP8080. Of course, the torque suffers a bit, but it can still pull hundreds of grams, more than enough to break normal magnets. Nonetheless, the drivetrain and wheel setup is better suited for pulling bearing axle cars on wide radius curves. Uh, I would consider at least using a one-to-one -one gearing for heavier trains or tighter turns. And yes, despite its huge size, the M1 does handle R40 geometry, and fairly smoothly at that, though I still would not recommend it. The body has so much overhang, and the 462 plus 4624 articulation has so many axles to derail. I designed the six axle bogies much like the ones on the Ace Tender, incorporating a hinged sliding axle, a central 20 tooth gear, and a split longitudinal drive shaft. The length of the locomotive causes other problems as well. Despite a full plate of clearance between the bogies and the body, even small bumps in the track can make the ends of the engine rest on the leading and trailing trucks. This can take weight off the driven axles and or derail the engine entirely. On the flip side, the body barely presses on the rear truck at all in R40 turns, which can potentially derail it if reversing too fast or stopping too hard. Furthermore, the articulation of the chassis makes the locomotive somewhat difficult to handle. I have to keep the model very level and move it very slowly in order to prevent the bogies from flopping around or even breaking off. In retrospect, there may have been a better wheel arrangement, but the LEGO re-railer works wonders for this engine either way. At least I was able to make the batteries and motors very easy to access. Finally, this design could theoretically accommodate four motors if paired with a powerful enough controller like actual RC equipment. It also has a spot for an official receiver in the back. I will make instructions for this eventually so be sure to check back on the rebrickable. For any other commission inquiries, uh, email the address on the channel, or even better, message me in Discord. On that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day.